Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Gezi and I'm a lecturer here at USM in tourism and hospitality. And I assisted Joe and Jamie with their GIS project, uh, looking at some food truck issues. Hi, I'm Jamie Rogers, currently enrolled in the Certificate of Sustainable Development here at USM. Hi, my name is Joe DeGraff. I'm a GIS certificate student and a AmeriCorps VISTA at USM. So my particular research has focused on food trucks and food safety, um, why there's a lot of food safety concerns and what particularly those are. But in addition to that, training methods of, of staff and employees as well. So in my research, I found there's a a large issue with the lack of consistency in laws and regulations. Um, they vary from city to city, state to state, um, where you have some vendors that will travel to the less strict area so that they can um, serve their food without getting certain licensing or permits. So that's has been seen as an issue really across the country. Um, so in this sector, there is a lot of varying laws um, to stay up to date with. So we did, we wanted to look at some of the permitting licensing issues needed um, here in Portland. Another reason is food trucks are, there's a huge growth. Um, these are some latest numbers that you can see they've grown almost 7% um, over the last five, six years. So, and here in Portland, they continue to grow as well. There's about 50 active food trucks um, right now that serve in the greater Portland region, um, but they'll also travel and um, throughout the state even to do some particular events. So some food safety concerns, the, the main ones when you, what you want to be concerned with when you're eating off a food truck is making sure that hand washing is available and that your employees are properly um, washing their hands as they go throughout their day. If you think of, you know, you're touching credit cards, you're touching money, it's really important to make sure that you have um, a water supply on board that can get hot enough and that you're able to wash your hands appropriately. Being outdoors, it, it gives that environment a favorable um, area for bacterial growth. So being outside, it's warm, it's humid, those are all factors that can contribute to foodborne illness and also just the mobile nature of the food truck industry, making sure you're protecting food from contamination during storage while you're um, driving to your next place of business, um, making sure you're properly prepping, displaying, and you're, you're also servicing to large groups of people as well. Um, so in this sector, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So it's really important to make sure um, that everyone's following the proper protocols. After speaking about food safety code violations as a group and discussing the goals of our project, we spoke to Tom Williams, a health inspector in the Permitting and Inspections Department the Portland City Government. He had a few requests for a useful map that would be beneficial for the department. That would include a map with inspection ratings, maybe that was color-coded, foodborne illness reports highlighted on a map, those are the ones that are most dangerous to consumers, and the ability to click on restaurants and pull up corresponding inspections and the inspection dates. He had a few other things to note that there are about 70 to 75 mobile vendors in Portland that were registered and inspected, but they do see trucks from Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, and from around the state of Maine, but they have not yet been a problem. The core of our map comes from two sets of data. First, food truck regulations from the city code posted as a PDF on the city government website and second, Portland Food Establishment Inspection Reports. These individual reports are recorded and published in PDF format, and we use optical character recognition software to extract the relevant fields to CSV before geocoding. We looked into mapping parking violations. We wanted to see where food trucks were parking and getting ticketed, maybe for staying too long or having a loud engine noises. 
but we found that the city didn't keep a database of all the parking violations and we'd have to search individually by license plate. This might be good for a future project. This is an example of what a Portland, Maine health inspection report looks like. At the top of the page is all the relevant information about the restaurant or place of business. This one, for example, is a inspection of Rowe Elementary School taken on January 17th, 2020. It has a zero critical violations and zero non-critical violations. And of course the address and contact information. Down below are all the relevant uh, compliance statuses for the individual inspection. This is really granular data and we were able to pull this too and hopefully use this in a future project. This is one page from the Portland Food Truck Rules and Regulations defining when and where food trucks can park and start their business. After we had all the data from the inspection reports in CSV format, we could start geocoding. We created an address locator using main E91 street data. This is a layer created by the Maine Emergency Services Communication Bureau that's updated monthly. We then separated out brick and mortar locations from mobile locations. This was because brick and mortar locations always had a relevant address on their inspection form, while mobile locations obviously did not. We manually geolocated mobile locations to the layer we've made from the food truck rules and regulations PDF the allowed parking locations layer. This is one of the first maps we created with all of the geocoded brick and mortar restaurants around Portland. The only places that had to be manually geocoded were here on Peaks Island and a few on the other islands. Most of the geocoding was accurate from the data we pulled from the inspection reports. This is the full map of allowed parking locations for food trucks on the Portland Peninsula. This information was um, digitized from the PDF document that the city government provides. Um, much of, many of these locations are um, just parking along roads. So what I ended up doing was using the E911 road data um, and creating a 10 foot buffer around those road center lines and highlighting the appropriate roads according to that document. Some of the smaller smaller locations, um, such as the two uh, parking spots located in the Back Bay parking lot here, um, I ended up zooming in and using the satellite imagery to mimic the, um, the data that they, they provided in that um, PDF document. This information will be useful for any future studies um, addressing the parking violations by the food trucks in Portland. Here's our map of the geocoded mobile locations placed around the allowed parking locations layer. The first map that I wanted to create was just to separate the inspections by location type. So there were four um, different location types that we identified. One was the brick and mortar restaurants, which the majority of these locations are. You can see them in, in red here. The schools were separated out here as well. So you can see them in the, the blue building here. There was also one correctional facility, the Cumberland County Jail, um, located here in the west of Portland. And then all of the mobile locations were actually geocoded along those allowed parking locations. Um, and those can be seen in blue here. One of the problems we ran into when um, creating maps of this data 
was that there were many inspections per geolocation. This is a result of Tom and his team going to a brick and mortar restaurant or a school um, year after year to do repeat inspections. So our first goal was to extract the month and year of the last inspection um, to help Tom and the city keep track of their inspections. Um, so we created a data set with only the last known inspection at each location. Um, this allowed us, us to style our map based on the month and year that this location was last visited, as well as create a number of dynamic maps that would help Tom um, and his team keep track of the critical and non-critical violations at each location. Using QGIS, I was able to create an expression that would extract the month and year of the last inspection for each geolocation based on this column right here. This column contains all of the um, inspections for each geolocation. Again, Tom was interested in the last known um, inspection at each geolocation. Um, having this separated by month would allow Tom and his team to kind of plan out their month um, if they haven't visited a location in um, a year or half a year, depending on, on how often they need to, to visit those. So that's something we really wanted to separate um, because they, they weren't necessarily concerned with the exact day, um, but having the, the month separated as well as the years of the most recent um, inspection would, would help their planning process. Once the last inspection was pulled for each geolocation, we were able to get in there and start pulling some dynamic maps for Tom and his team. So this map is just a close-up of a map we created that allowed us to visualize the number of critical and non-critical violations at each location via pie chart. So you can see here that the critical violations are in red and the non-critical violations are in green. This allows us to quickly take a look at each location to see whether they are all um, non-critical violations, so all of the green dots, or if they were all the critical violations, all of the red dots, or a combination of the two here. One of the downfalls for representing data in this way is that it doesn't allow us to visualize the number of violations at each location. So Lytham Burroughs here on Exchange Street only has one critical violation, no non-critical violations, um, but it is represented in the same way as other locations that may have five, six, or seven critical violations at their location as some of these geolocations did. This, of course, shows the main map view that we wanted to get over to Tom. All of the inspection locations are broken out by type. So the restaurant, schools, and correctional facilities all have their own symbol. And each month is represented by a different color here. So you can easily look at the map and determine what month that this, the, each of these locations were last visited in. So you can see here, um, zoomed into Mellon Street, this pink dot is a restaurant and it was last inspected in February. Actually clicking into the point gets you more of the information that was extracted from the inspection um, PDFs. So this is Quinn's Bardega. It is pre-operational here. It was last inspected in February of 2020. And you can see at this point that there were no either critical or non-critical violations found. One 
One additional option that we wanted to provide here for Tom and his team was the existence of a web-based map. So this map contains all of the information included in that last inspection shapefile that we created, um, but it, it presents it in a way where someone who doesn't necessarily have knowledge of how to work with a shapefile or open an attribute table, it allows them to click on these dots in, in the city of Portland and, and determine when that last inspection is. It's also very easy to label these locations as well as um, it would be an option for publishing this data for the public if the city chooses to do so. So after working on this project and speaking with Tom, these were some potential um, future projects that we could work on. Um, looking at specific location data um, and making sure that trucks are actually operating where they're supposed to. Um, that was one of our initial plans, but we weren't able to complete that because of COVID-19 um, and a lot of trucks not really being in service right now. But that's something to really look into and making sure that um, trucks are operating and parking where they're supposed to be. Um, another potential project is looking at where trucks are particularly parking. Um, and then if they park there on a weekly basis, you're able to get that data. And then you can go into and looking at the violations. Um, are they consistently not washing their hands? Do they have issues with water temperature, issues with pests? You can kind of pull that data and pinpoint where those trucks are located um, but you can also do this right now for brick and mortar restaurants to look at are these critical violations in the reports um, or are they minor violations and then also a thought to make a public map with inspection data so all of these um, inspection reports are available to the public but it takes some time to go into their website and find them so if an easy to use user-friendly map is available where you can go in um, and see your favorite restaurant see if they have any issues um, that might you know hinder someone from eating at a particular restaurant if they see they've had consistent violations and consistent issues um, but this would also help city inspectors know um, what, which restaurants they really have to look out for. So that's something that's a challenge for restaurants because it can be viewed as bad marketing, um, but this information is already available to the public. So that's something that we can look to discuss with uh, the city and kind of get their thoughts from that as well.